talking about Carol animation, but more specifically, the Breakdown Assistant, one of the new features that came out with Harmony 25. This is a part two, so I would strongly encourage you to go check part one. The link will be into the description. In part one, I explained to you how usually we animate in cutout and how it relates to the breakdown assistant. So if you watch this video and you have no idea what's going on with the world, um, I warned you, go check part one. Today, what I'm gonna show you is how the breakdown assistant works and all the nooks and crannies and everything that it can offer you that I know of. <laughs> so first, how do you go get the breakdown assistant? It is available in two locations. Either it's a view or it's a toolbar. So if you wanna go get your breakdown assistant, Either you go into the plus of any view and you find the breakdown assistant view or once you get used to it and you want to get something smaller that you can just fit in a toolbar, you can also right click and find the breakdown assistant toolbar and you can just put it anywhere that you want. It's like a baby version of the breakdown assistant. However, the toolbar is kind of cooler also because it's got this hamburger menu that is not located into the breakdown assistant view. I don't know if that's a mistake or if it's going to be fixed or something. Once you have your breakdown assistant view and toolbar, you're ready to go. So what I'm going to use today is two key poses of Woo, like this. And I just want to say how the breakdown assistant really changed the way that I see cutouts. I always hated to animate cutout. Now don't get me wrong, I love how it looks and I love so many shows that are made in cutout. I don't hate the technique. It's just that I didn't enjoy the process of animating cutout in cutout animation to do an anticipation or an overshoot. You have to take every single piece of your rig and move it one little millimeter just so that it doesn't look stiff and bad and gets what cutout gets the bad rep for because it's so easy to just take your whole rig and be like whoop I made an anticipation and then it looks cheap and bad. Making anticipation and overshoots and cutout animation is painful. It's not so hard as much as it's just boring and very long to do to move all the pieces, especially when you have a ray with lots of pieces. To me, it's just boring. I have so much fun doing the key poses and then I have to do all my anticipation and it just drains me. I'm like, oh, I'll do it later and then I never come back to my scene. And the great thing is that the breakdown assistant will be able to give you a rough of these anticipation and overshoot. And the most beautiful thing is that no, it's not AI. And I say that because a lot of people are like, oh, so it can give you your anticipation and overshoot and it's the AI. No, it's math. It's almost exactly the same as going into your set E's for multiple parameters and like pulling the curves beyond reason, <laughs> but in a less ratchet way. <laughs> I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. Okay, so I have pose A and I have pose B. And if I put my cursor in the center between these two poses and I press here on the number zero, zero is the middle between your two poses wherever you decide to put it. So I can put my cursor here, right next to my pose A. If I press on zero, it will give me the pose that would have been visually like in the center, okay? But then it puts it here. And by the way, I'm gonna remove my interpolation because guess what? You don't even need it. I can still be here, press on zero, and it's going to give me the pose that would be in between these two poses. So this is another part that's amazing because as a cutout animator now, I don't need to constantly shift between motion and stop motion keyframes and motion and then oh i have some motion keyframes and then i put a keyframe ah fuck <laughs> i forgot to set it at the right step so instead of it being annoying you can always work in stop motion keyframes and then as you place your cursor you can choose to favor a or b what do i mean by favoring a or b it has to do with the percentage that are here so like i said uh, you have zero which is smack into the middle and then you have plus 25, plus 50, plus 75. So all these positives are gonna favor pose B. So the pose that is after. And then the minus are the ones that are gonna favor the poses that was there before. So if I remove that key here, for example, and I just, you know, I'm gonna put my keyframe towards the middle. If I press on zero, I'm gonna have the pose that is like smack into the middle of the two. So it's almost the same as if I would have just put my interpolation. So I have my interpolation here. If I remove it and I press on zero, pretty close. I think it's exactly the same. But instead, if I remove my key now, and instead of pressing on zero, let's say I press on 75 towards B. I'm gonna get a pose that's 75% closer to B than it was from A. And if instead I chose minus 75, it's gonna be like 75% towards pose A. There you go. So then it's closer to what pose A was. And like I said, you can decide to put that keyframe wherever you want. So how does the view work? 
put your cursor into your timeline wherever you want that post to be like stamped and then into the breakdown assistant view you're gonna have zero like i said zero is the middle between the two poses and then if you click on any of these number it's gonna give you the number like between zero or 75 and if you press on the shift key you can also bump these number up so that's default and if i press shift it just goes a bit stronger so as i was saying here you have the minus 175 percent for example if i press there this is going to give me my anticipation so pose a anticipation and pose b and this is because it goes like as if it was over here because as we said zero is the pose in between 100 is pose A, so 150 or 125 would be what is here. And this is where people thought it was AI. It is not, it's purely mathematics. It's as if you were pulling this and going beyond the numbers that you had originally. So like I said, it's as easy as just pressing on the numbers. So remember these positions, this is gonna be helpful if you have a hard time visualizing it. So zero, the middle, 100 is pose A or pose B. And then when you go beyond 100, it's because you're going beyond what you could see with your interpolation, you're going before or after your pose to get your anticipation or your overshoots. So these numbers is press and you're gonna get that percentage. You also have the number here that is with the little macaroni. <laughs> the little macaroni is gonna nudge your poses a little bit each time you press it. So that's also another way to do it. And last but not least, the other way you can do it is also to just take the slider and you can just slide it. And as you can see to the left here, the number is changing. And when you release, it's gonna give you that pose with that percentage uh, favoring one or the other pose. So see, I removed my keyframe and I'm just gonna slide this. So I can slide it towards the other pose or I can slide it towards the other pose. And it's going to automatically give you what the pose would look like without you having to put anything in there. Like you don't need to have your interpolation and like click and drag it or to play with the curve in a very ratchet method to try and get your anticipation it is right there and you can see it more or less in real time like i'm not kidding when i said that this made me love cutout animation like i've been doing it ever since i saw that feature and it was great so what i was explaining in the previous video though is that the first time i was pitched this i just thought it was a fancier way to just do the click and drag thing which I've been doing for years before, but honestly, it's way more than that. I think it's the beginning of a, very, of a new feature that's gonna be very helpful in the long run. So do I still use the sliding method? Yes, because sometimes it's just quicker when I know what I'm doing, but to get my anticipation, this is freaking amazing. No, it's not perfect because like I said, it's just math and sometimes it doesn't respect your arcs. So like with the sword here, if I do my anticipation like this, Maybe I would want to give it a better arc, but as you can see, all the little pieces, like the feet, the, the armor skirt and all that, they moved a little bit, just enough so that it doesn't look cheap. And after that, I can go and spend more time on what matters, like the sword, the position of the face, the eyes, the mouth, and I don't have to worry about the hundreds of pieces into the rest of the body. So to finish with the buttons of the breakdown assistant, like I said, you have the buttons, you have the nudge macaronis, you have the slider, and if you press on shift, you're gonna up the values. And speaking of, the va speaking, of, speaking of the values, you can also right click on these values and you can edit either one of them or all of them to put your own numbers. Cause I know some people have their own habits. So instead of being minus 75, it could be 66, 33, like every show has like their own little recipe or so I've been told. And this is how you would set it up. You can also use it on nodes for compositing, for effects. You can use this on everything. like. Honestly, I could talk about that feature for an hour and I'm already overboard. Like this is going to take so long to edit. I hate myself now. <laughs> also, you have here these little buttons in the toolbar. They're the same. It's just that if you don't want to have the view visible, you can use these. These are going to use the same values as your breakdown assistant view. And of course, if you're going to tackle this, don't forget to read the documentation. So I hope you had a good time and I cannot wait to see you guys maybe connect more with cutout animation because it is such a cool medium to use. Uh, to do your projects because I'm an animator but I'm a fan of hand-drawn stop motion cut out 3d I just love animation and I really hope that you're gonna have fun so see you next time bye